One of the hopes that many people had for possible legal consequences to Donald Trump for the variety of things that he did while president, which by the way, aren't just encapsulated in his support for what happened on January 6th. You'll be shocked to find out he did lots of other bad stuff before that. Um, but one area, the violations of the emoluments clause might be closing up because the Supreme Court just yesterday put an end to two lawsuits that had accused President Donald J. Trump of violating the Constitution's emoluments clauses by profiting from his hotels and restaurants in New York and Washington. There were no dissents noted. So they apparently said that he's not the president anymore, so it's moot. So Adrian, what do you, what do you make of that? Oh, they're punting. They don't want to decide the issue. They could have easily continued to decide the issue, especially because it may turn on potential illegality. Uh, it was ripened before them, but they decide, no, we're gonna just wait and call it moot. Because the thing is, is that appellate courts can operate on their own schedule. So they could have decided this while he was in office, but they've opted not to. They waited on a lot of these cases so they don't have to decide the issue, so they can punt. And as we've recently seen with Chief Justice Roberts, the fact that he is not going to preside over the second impeachment trial, it says that they are trying to divorce themselves from Donald Trump, even though they need to go ahead and play a role and do their jobs. It's like you've been given one of the highest jobs in the nation. Also, it's a lifetime appointment, mm -hmm. yet you are punting on things because you are afraid. That is problematic. Yeah, yeah, and we should bear in mind that one out of three of them are there because of Donald Trump. But that said, some of the others who weren't the more liberal justices, they apparently also didn't have a problem with this. So are you at all surprised to find out that we didn't get like, you know, a Sotomayor dissent or anything like that? Um, no, I'm not particularly surprised because I think they just don't want to touch these things. Uh, the fact is, is that generally uh, not, you know, showing any hands here, but you know, in chambers, they sit around and talk about, hey, how are we going to decide this? Where do we want to go with this? And so, if they all can get on board on certain things and they can agree, especially not to have anyone dissent, so it can look like they are operating as one unified body, that's the better way to go. And so, the thing is, that's a lot of politics that actually go into the appellate court process, and the fact that people may make concessions here. But there may be instances where they're unwilling to make concessions and thus we get these riveting dissents like we've seen from Justice Sotomayor a lot mm -hmm. lately. And so this could have been a product of negotiations. Interesting, yeah. Um, so there's at least like two things that are potentially frustrating to any individual about, about this. So one is that I, like, I personally think, maybe I'm being unreasonable, feel free to dislike the video if you think so. If the emoluments clause is to mean anything, he definitely violated it in a variety of different ways. Like if, if, if the design was, we're worried that people will pay off the president and that will influence things. Um, well, first of all, I'm with you. I would also apply that to all of our other elected officials, but I get it. We're limiting it to the, the president in the Constitution. So him not having the consequences, I think people can be rightfully annoyed by that. But let's say that you even set aside that and you forget about Donald Trump. It seems like the big issue was, that we don't know exactly what we're supposed to think about the emoluments clause, what actually is a violation of it. And so we're, they're punting on it. So Adrian, are we any closer to like in four years when President Hawley starts like getting checks written directly to him? Like, do we have any better idea of what the emoluments clause is, what its limitations are? Are we any more prepared to adjudicate these things in the future? Nope. And that's part of the problem and not having that precedent out there. We're not gonna really have a track record, have a model to understand the extent of these clauses that are constitutional, some are statutory. But when the court punts, we all end up losing. I get that there are instances in which issues are moot without question. But then there are issues that can also be reoccurring. We saw that in Roe v. Wade and the fact that, hey, you can get pregnant again. So just because maybe she's not pregnant right now doesn't mean that this issue won't come up again. And so the fact that we need to have these decisions, these interpretations out there to guide us, those are things the court is supposed to do. And so in instances where they punt, where they could legitimately decide the matter, it really deprives us all. Plus also something we should remember about this case is that you know Maryland, DC and several of the restaurants had filed this lawsuit. And what they were looking for were documents. They were trying to get access to information that was being essentially withheld from them 
so that they could make an assessment of whether Trump is violating the clause here. And now they can't get those things. So if anything, really, it's that SCOTUS is effectively almost impeding the potential for justice. And that's not cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, obstruction's big in DC. I guess they just want to be in on it. Um, but anyway, what, what do you think about the possibility of some sort of law actually being passed to try to define it? Whether whether because that would actually do the job or else a challenge to that law might at least compel the Supreme Court to do something? Yes, um, it would be great if uh, there was a law passed for the emoluments clause, as well as a lot of the clauses, uh, including the constitutional pardon power, things that would define them clearly a lot more, the extent of them. But I just, I really don't know necessarily if Congress has um, really the strength in it to make any true substantive changes for the betterment of our country. Because the thing is, there's so much um, just uncertainty out there and ambiguity in our laws and in our code. And without having that guidance there, it allows that the system can be abused by those who are in positions of power. And unfortunately, I think that some people want to continue on with that. Yeah, we should just strip it out of the constitution. If it's not gonna mean anything and we're not gonna define it, let's stop pretending it's there. It's like like it would be reassuring to have a security system on your house. But if you open it up, it's full of Play-Doh. Maybe it's best to not have the case there in the first place. I know, very frustrating. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.